friends and welcome to another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. Hey, this morning I had an opportunity, this week I had an opportunity to be in northern Michigan. And there's a lake up in northern Michigan uh, called Lake Misaki that um, I've heard about for years that has uh, pretty exceptional walleye fishing through the ice. So it has been... It has long been a desire of mine to get up to this lake during the open water season and just check out the lake, get a feel for the lake, try to figure out what's going on. Uh, try to get a feel for the structure of the lake, uh, the type of fish habitat in the lake. Just learn the lake a little bit during the uh, open water season. <clears throat> So I'm here this morning, it is late September, we're two days away from the official first day of fall, however, uh, we've had an unusual uh, warm, we've had unusually warm weather for the past uh, two weeks. So right now in northern Michigan, daytime highs should be low to mid 60s. Well, I woke up this morning, it was 60. Uh, and it's, it's, I, was up, I was up in the same area last weekend with my son deer hunting for the uh, youth hunt, Michigan youth hunt. And we had the same thing. We had highs in the 80s every day we were up here. So, so we've just had a couple weeks of uh, unusually warm weather. So let's see the uh, water temperature. Water temperature is around 69 degrees, so still pretty warm water for this late in the year, this far north in Michigan. Um, so that tells me there's probably not going to be a fall bite yet. Basically, my plan this morning is to uh, actually my plan this morning is twofold. So my first goal is to motor around the lake with my hummingbird and just try to get a feel for the lake structure, try to get a feel for where I would likely fish through the ice um, if I'm to make it back up here during the ice season. And then secondly, obviously my goal is to catch some fish. So I know this lake has a good population of walleye, bass, and pike. Um, so it's my intention to, basically I'm junk fishing this morning. I'm going to go out and throw some top water early, some moving baits. We had, uh, we had an incredible fog this morning. Uh, I actually had a lot of difficulty getting here because of the fog. Uh, so, probably going to throw some top, even though it's already 8 o'clock, I'm probably going to throw some top water uh, early on. And then I'm probably going to go to crankbaits. Um, swim baits and if I get a little bit of breeze maybe some spinner baits uh, but really just junk fishing uh, if I locate bass off the weed lines or what I suspect to be bass off the weed lines I may slow down fish a drop shot or a Ned rig uh, but primarily I'm gonna move around a lot with uh, with some search baits and just just junk fishing Well, the seagulls are interested in my whopper plopper. There we go. And we got a pike on the whopper plopper. First fish of the day. He 
has got a mouth full of trouble hooks. As you can see, this pike blasted my whopper plopper right at the boat. I had heard that this lake was full of pike, so I came prepared with some plenty of uh, wire leaders. I don't want to be giving away brand new lures to pike. That's a good sign though. Five and a half minutes into a five and a half minutes into a fishing trip on a new lake. Pick up the first fish off the weed line. I'm pretty happy with that. Now that was only the first fish I've ever caught on a whopper plopper. I just started using them a couple months ago. But I will tell you there's a couple things that I do love about the whopper plopper. First of all, it casts a country mile. This is just the small one. This is the 90 series, the smallest one they make. I'm using the small one because I'm on crystal clear water. And I don't know what size the bass are in this lake. So, obviously we see that the pike don't mind them. But even though it's the smallest one, it still casts like it still casts a mile. And then besides uh, casting a long way, you can cover a lot of water with it, much like a buzz bait. Unlike a, you know, a walk the dog bait or, or a popper, uh, a buzz bait or a whopper plopper, you can just cast it a mile and cover some water. That's probably my favorite thing about the bait. And musky fishermen have been using the same design for years. Uh, Joe Booker makes a top water bait called a top raider. And I know that bait's been popular with musky fishing for more than 20 years. Now there are now there are at least a dozen uh, similar designs for musky fishing. So it's a it's a lure that's been popular and successful with musky fishermen for a long time. I'm kind of surprised it took I'm kind of surprised it took decades for bass fishermen to adapt to it. Anytime I'm searching for top water fish on a new body of water, I'm going to move up to the inside, to the inside break on the weed line. And while I'm, while I'm moving down the weed line, I'm going to fan cast so that I'm covering some very shallow water all the way out to the out to and including the weed line. And then depending on the time of year, maybe even maybe even out to the deep edge of the weed line. But with 69 degree water, I'm going to assume that fish are going to be likely from the weed line to the shoreline. Alright, well the bass like the Whopper Whopper 2.
<clears throat> well, my first bass on the Whopper Plopper. It's a real respectable 17 and a half inch smallie. I'll take it. Anyway, like I was saying before I got my phone call, really the key to a successful fishing trip is uh, just being intentional. In other words, not approaching, not approaching a lake haphazardly. So get online, do a little bit of research, do some map study. Sometimes I still like to go old school and get a paper map. But do a little bit of research on the lake. Do a little bit of map study. Have a game plan for your day. You know, if you understand the seasonal movements of the species that you're chasing, you'll at least have some idea You know where to start looking for fish and if you even if you don't even if you're just out junk fishing hit the shallows with some top water you know move out to the weed edge or you know if you're talking about reservoirs you know the creek channels and points and then you know look at deep water but whatever, you just, you gotta have a game plan, you gotta be intentional. Honestly, it's not much different than, uh, it's not much different than our walk with Christ, really. In order to be a, in order to be a follower of Christ, you really gotta be intentional about your relationship with Christ. By that, I really mean the same thing. You just uh, don't expect to grow in your relationship with Christ haphazardly. You really have to be intentional. Uh, you need to spend time in the Word of God. You're not going to learn. You're not going to learn the Word of God if your uh, Bible's sitting on your bookshelf. If you don't know who God is, uh, you're not going to grow in your relationship with Christ. So be intentional about your relationship with Christ. Spend time reading God's Word. Spend time around other Christian people. Find a way to get involved in ministry and serve. Probably the most important part about growing in Christ is getting involved in a local body of believers and serving Christ. sitting in church once or twice a week in the pews on the sidelines. Um, not many people grow in their relationship with Christ that way. So if you're not already a member of a if you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church um, with other believers that are actively serving Christ you need to be. Actually marking a few fish off of the uh, off the deeper side of the weed line. That was fun. <laughs> I had a fish on right there at the boat. I think it was a small largemouth, but it was not more than six inches long.
There's a better fish. So not a good fish, but that little guy had both had that entire rattlebait in his mouth, both sets of trebles. That tells me that the, the fish are munching today. So that's a small, large mouth. So now we've got pike, small mouth, and large mouth. covering water. Lake Masaki mission was a success. I only had a half a day to spend here. I did get to spend a good hour graphing the deep structure. So if I make it here in uh, February, fishing through the ice, I got a pretty good idea where I want to start. Um, caught some fish. Caught several largemouth, mostly smaller. Caught a pike, caught a nice smallie. The best part was that all my fish came on search baits. Like I said, I don't know this lake. I was really just junk fishing. The weather has been all screwy. So with the exception of one fish I hooked on a drop shot, all my fish came on search baits. That's all I threw today was search baits. Through top water in the, this morning, landed two fish and missed a blow up on a top water. Um, caught fish on a rattle trap this afternoon or late morning, and then caught my last caught my last fish and missed a couple on uh, spinnerbait. All in all, good day. I had a great time. I'll definitely be back to this lake. This was a great time.